What's up guys, Wagley here, and today in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to turn your OBS stream quality from looking like this to like this. Nah, but for real though, this will be an in-depth tutorial with the best OBS stream settings. In case you guys are using Streamlabs OBS to stream, I have a separate tutorial on that. You can check the info card, but this video is just for OBS Studio users. And if you're thinking about switching from Streamlabs OBS to normal OBS, just know that normal OBS will be less power intensive on your PC, so OBS will probably be better if you have a slower PC. But Streamlabs OBS does make it a lot easier to add overlays and alerts, and there's just much more customization with your stream. But ultimately, it's your decision. So if you aren't aware, OBS is a free streaming and recording software on PC or Mac. So before starting anything, before even opening OBS, let's make sure that you run OBS as an administrator. Doing this will prevent any issues and maximize the streaming abilities by ensuring that OBS will get all of the necessary resources. So to do this, just find where you have OBS, right click it, click properties, compatibility, and click run this program as an administrator and apply and then okay. So now anytime you open OBS, it'll ask you if you want to allow this app to make changes to your device, just click yes. So down here are the scenes and sources, which I'm not going to be going to in depth in since that could be enough for a whole other video. I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of how these work, but in case you don't, basically you can create multiple custom scenes that you can switch between during your streams to have a whole different look. And inside each of the scenes, you can set up sources, which is basically setting up your stream capture or positioning your face cam or adding your microphone or anything else that you do with your stream. Like I have this custom controller here. So when my controller's on, it'll show what movements I'm making on my controller. Like I have a stream starting animation here. Like while I'm getting things up and my stream starting, I can just leave this on here. Now let's get into the main part of the tutorial, which is the best settings for OBS to greatly improve your stream quality. So on the right here, click on settings. Nothing in the general tab will really affect your stream quality, so you can leave these all to default. But if you want, you can change random things like your theme or settings that are more for convenience and not really affecting your stream. In the stream tab, just select the streaming service that you're using. I use YouTube, so I'm just going to select that. And if you're streaming, you can either connect your account or use a stream key. But if there's any reason that you aren't able to connect your account, then you can use a stream key which you can get from your stream and just paste in here. If you're streaming with YouTube, it might be easier to get a custom stream key because that way it's a little bit easier to set up your streams and then just paste in the stream key and start. So whichever one you prefer, you can either connect your account or use a stream key. So I'm gonna skip over output and audio for now and just go over to video. So the base canvas resolution should be the resolution that you want the black box where you set up your scenes and sources on. So this big box here, while the output resolution is what you're actually going to be streaming in. However, if you want to stream in a lower resolution than your monitor, like 1080p, then it will be best to set them both to the same value since rescaling could result in a quality loss. So these should really always be the same. In most cases, both of these will be set to 1080p, which is the most common quality for streaming. But if you have a slower internet, then 720p is also perfectly fine. I'm going to get into the quality settings more deeply later so you can find out the perfect stream quality for you. The FPS should really only be 60 or 30. If you're gaming, then definitely use 60 FPS because it will look terrible with anything lower. But if you're experiencing a lot of lag from the power of your PC, then you can change it to 30. But if you're doing a video where you're just talking with your face cam, then 30 FPS will look perfectly fine as well. And for your downscale filter, you want to set it to Lanxos. Now let's go over to the output settings. Right away, change this output mode from simple over to advanced to have the most control over your stream. Now let's choose your bitrate. So you have to go to a website called speedtest.net and find out what your upload speed is. So just click go. 
So this first speed doesn't really matter. This is your download speed. Just wait till it goes over the upload speed. So mine looks like it's around 33, 34, 35. So my upload speed was 36 megabits per second. Now grab a calculator and multiply this by a thousand. And this is just converting this from megabits per second to kilobits per second, which is what the bit rate is in. But you're gonna wanna get rid of around 30% so you can multiply by 0.7 because you wanna save some of your upload speed for any other things that you're doing. Like if other people in your house are using the internet, you're not gonna wanna take up all of it for your stream. So don't use more than 70% of your upload speed. So luckily, I have pretty fast internet, so I have around 25,000, which is more than enough for streaming. Now, just remember this number, and if you're streaming to YouTube, then you want to use this quality chart, which I'll have linked in the description. And if you're streaming to Twitch, then you want to use this quality chart, which is also in the description. So just pick the chart that you're going to use for whether you're on Twitch or YouTube, and just look through these values and find the bitrate that you have. For now, don't worry about NVIDIA NVENC or X264. Just look at the bitrate and and the resolution and frame rate. So on Twitch, if you have 6,000 bit rate, then you can safely stream at 1080p 60 FPS and you'll set your bit rate to 6,000. But let's say your bit rate's only at 3,000, then you shouldn't be streaming at more than 720p 60 fps because the stream is just going to turn out bad and on youtube whatever resolution you want to stream at so let's say you want to stream 1080p 60 fps you can use a bit rate from anywhere from 4500 to 9000 so if you're streaming 1080p 60 fps and you have more than 9000 there's no reason to set your bit rate more than 9000 because it won't be doing anything for you and down here you can see the bit rates necessary for these streaming resolutions so you can go back over to the video tab and change your resolution if necessary if you found out that you need to stream in 720p or 1080p just change it to the one that you need to stream in for the bitrate that you have and then go back over to output and change the bitrate to the one that you need to use since I'm streaming to YouTube I'll stream at 9,000 kilobits per second so the encoder is very important for stream quality hardware NVENC new uses your computer's graphics card while x264 uses the computer's CPU for encoding you definitely want to be on hardware and bank new if you have a newer nvidia graphics card because the encoding won't affect your gaming performance at all since the newer nvidia graphics cards have an entire separate chip on the gpu but if you don't even see this option it is because you have an older nvidia gpu or if you have an amd graphics card in that case you'll just use software x264 for encoding so if hardware and bank new is available for you then choose it if not, then choose Software X264. So if you're going to be using Hardware NVENC new, then watch this part of the video. But if you're using Software X264, then skip to the timestamp on the screen. So for Hardware NVENC new, so leaving the keyframe interval at 0 is safe because that's auto. Or you can put it to 2 because on the Twitch chart, it recommends putting 2 for the keyframe interval. So you can put that if you want to if you're streaming to Twitch or leaving it at zero will be perfectly fine as well. The preset should be set to quality and the profile should be set to high. Make sure look ahead is disabled and psycho visual tuning is enabled. Leave GPU at zero and put max B frames to two. So now if you're streaming with X264, then watch this part now. But if you just filled in the settings for NVENC new, then just skip to the timestamp on the screen because you don't need to watch this. So make sure to leave the rate control on CBR and just fill in the bitrate that you got from the chart. So mine would be 9,000. Leave use custom buffer size off. The keyframe interval, it's safe to leave it on zero because that's auto, or you can change it to two because the Twitch chart recommends two, but either of these will be perfectly fine. So for the CPU usage preset, the lower you go on the list, the harder it will be for the CPU, but the better the quality will be. So if you have a slower processor, then go with super fast or ultra fast or very fast. However, the quality will not be as good. So you'll need to find a nice balance between the quality and performance depending on the power of your CPU. Set the profile to high and you can leave these settings blank. Okay, now for the final tab is the audio settings. For the sample rate, you can find out which one you need to use by going over to your microphone and headphone settings. So in the bottom right, right click on the microphone down here and click sound settings. Go over to your output settings. So this would be your headphones and click on the arrow here. So for me, it says 48,000 Hertz, but yours may say 44,100. 
100. Go back to sound and go over to your microphone. And this one's also at 48,000 hertz. So I know I can put my sample rate at 48 kilohertz. If your hertz were different for your microphone and headphones, then just change them both to the same one. But if they're the same, then select the corresponding sample rate in OBS. Making sure that you have the right sample rate will ensure your audio sounds as it's supposed to. Lastly, just click apply, okay, and you're done. So if this video was helpful, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.